Hi, it's Michelle of Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Cosmetic Chemist, and today we're doing something a little bit different. I recently saw this list of top products mentioned on the Skincare Addiction subreddit on Reddit. I don't know how many people know this, but I actually used to be a moderator there from 2014 till 2019. So I'm really familiar with these products and I thought it would be interesting to do like a tier ranking list, which I've seen Anthony Fantano and James Welsh and tons of other people do. We're gonna go through Reddit's top 15 products and put them onto this tier, which goes from Holy Grail all the way down to not for anyone. And then below that, I've got like a little area, which is products that I haven't actually tried. As usual, these are my opinions on the products. My skin is not your skin. Don't stop using a product you love because I didn't like it. So this list of most discussed products on skincare addiction, it's from a site called Luria and it's from the last year. So the mentions can be good or bad. It's not really distinguished. So I would expect most of them are good mentions though. Okay, so our first product is the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. And this is pretty much no surprise. CeraVe is like Reddit's favorite skincare brand. It makes sense, it fits in with a lot of needs of the people from the skincare addiction demographic. So from a 2017 survey, I don't think there's a newer one. Most of the people on there are female, which is the case with pretty much anything skincare, but also in their 20s. So CeraVe's products are very budget friendly. Reddit is a largely US-based site and CeraVe is really easy to get pretty much anywhere in the US. Lots of people end up on skincare addiction because they're looking for solutions to their acne. And this is recommended by tons of dermatologists for that because it's really it's suitable for such a wide range of people it's fragrance free they're very inoffensive formulas reddit users are generally more focused on effectiveness of skincare products rather than enjoyment most people got there to try to fix a problem with their skin reddit is also a text-based site and so there's a lot more emphasis on information rather than anything aesthetic like something like instagram or tiktok i think they're fine they're a very safe recommendation if you're looking for plain products, but I do kind of just find them a little bit boring, a bit joyless. I prefer a more sensory experience with my skincare. I like things that feel nice and smell nice. So yeah, they're good, but I find it difficult to actually get excited about them. So the hydrating cleanser, I think one of the reasons it is so popular is because it is non-foaming. So there is this very popular myth that foaming cleansers dehydrate your skin, and this has been around for ages and it still persists. I've talked about this before in my video about cleanser myths. More foam doesn't necessarily mean less gentle and more stripping. There are lots of ways to boost foam in a cleanser without just turning to harsh surfactants. Back in the day, I think this was more of an issue because the only real way that people made cleansers foam was by adding more sodium lauryl sulfate, which tends to be drying unless it's formulated carefully. So I think this myth is still around because of more old school skincare experts and also just like legacy information online. So this is a good cleanser. It is really hydrating. The name CeraVe actually comes from ceramides and multivesicular technology, and both of these are about moisturizing. Ceramides are substances in your skin that contribute to that skin barrier and CeraVe products contain them to replenish anything that's lost. So it's meant to restore them for more moisturized, less dry skin. The multivesicular technology part is about having moisturizing ingredients in little packages with multiple layers around them. And so that means that these vesicles sit on your skin and slowly release the moisturizing ingredients over time. So you have prolonged moisturizing after you've used a CeraVe product. Now, I don't know how much of this technology is going to last after you've washed the cleanser off, but it does have a lot of hydrating ingredients, which at least will keep your skin hydrated when you're cleansing, which is one of the more compromising steps in a skincare routine when your skin becomes a bit more vulnerable. This cleanser is not my favorite of their range. It is a fatty alcohol-based formula that comes out a bit like a kind of gel. It doesn't foam and I do have a preference for foaming cleansers. I just prefer how nice they are to spread over my face. I do like the pump and I like that pretty much all CeraVe cleansers come in pumps. I think this is also popular because it is CeraVe's recommendation for dry skin. A lot of people on skincare addiction, again, end up there because they have acne and so many acne treatments are quite drying. So there's things like Roaccutane, which is the oral drug, which dries out your skin quite a lot. People are maybe using Tretinoin or Adapalene or Differin or even benzoyl peroxide. And all of these will dry out your skin. And so you kind of want a cleanser that isn't going to strip more. I have oily skin and so CeraVe's recommendation is different so I was always bound to not like this one as much but 
It is really solid for people with dry skin, so I'm going to put it in solid choice. All right, the next product is the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. So this is called the CeraVe In The Tub on Reddit. Yeah, CeraVe have a lot of moisturizers in their range and a lot of them have very similar names and similar color coding. Again, this is for dry skin and with the skincare addiction demographic, it makes sense that this is so popular. This formula hasn't changed much since CeraVe started. I think the biggest change was that they took out parabens around 2020 for marketing reasons. Every once in a while, people will freak out about parabens and then discover that the CeraVe that their dermatologist recommended is full of poison. This is not true. I have a video on why clean beauty is BS, but it happens all the time. And I think it is happening on TikTok probably right now. So it makes sense from a commercial angle to get rid of parabens, I guess, as much as I hate it because parabens are really safe preservatives. This has a really nice mix of moisturizing ingredients. There's my favorite glycerin. There's things like petrolatum and dimethicone, which are occlusives. They help seal in moisture. So you have the ceramides, you have phytosphingosteine, which is an ingredient that is meant to mimic what's already in your skin. There's cholesterol, which again is already in your skin. Now there is this problem with this product, which is closed comedones. Some people just get tons of these with it. Closed comedones are like little uninflamed pimples. So you can squeeze out white stuff, but it doesn't go red. A lot of the time we call these clogged pores and a lot of people put this down to the fatty alcohols in the product. I'm not sure if that is the case. It's the satirical alcohol, but yeah, it does seem to be a problem. So I'm going to put this again in solid choice because I think it is a good recommendation for most people, even if it's not super suitable for my skin, which is more on the oily side. Okay. On to product three, which is the CeraVe Foaming Cleanser. This one is my preferred CeraVe cleanser. It's good for oily skin. It is quite hydrating. So it turns out there are a couple of different versions of this. The one I tried, I bought in an Australian store. So that is the Australian and European version, which has cocoa betaine as the first surfactant. There is a different version, which is sold in the US and UK, and that has cocomidopropyl hydroxysultane as the first surfactant. I haven't tried that one yet. I'll have to try to track it down. The one I'm reviewing here is the cocoa betaine. I was feeling pretty silly about not noticing this earlier, but then I saw that the official Australian CeraVe website got confused. It has US reviews on it. So I stopped feeling bad. It's got a nice mix of ingredients. So it's got some really gentle surfactants that aren't really harsh or stripping. It's got cocoa betaine. It's got sodium cocal glycinate. Both of these are really quite hydrating surfactants. We also have the standard moisturizing ingredients that CeraVe puts in pretty much all of their products. So glycerin, ceramides, hyaluronic acid. I'm going to put this in solid choice. The reason is I don't like the way it smells and you know how some things smell like chemicals, which I hate saying because I am a chemist, but that is what it smells like. It's like really artificial, slightly plasticky smell. I do like it. It's just going to be bumped down to solid choice because I don't love it. Then we have a couple of other CeraVe products. We've got the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion and we have the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing. I haven't tried either of these, so I'm going to put these down in no opinion. But to be honest, I think they would probably be pretty safe in solid choice. The next product is the Paula's Choice BHA Liquid. So this is the 2% salicylic acid and I don't think this is any surprise, but it is going straight up in the holy grails for me because this product, I have been using it since 2009. I've not stopped using it since then. This is like a legacy cult product that has been popular since before 2009. The reason I bought it was because I saw so many rave reviews of it on the internet back then. And I think back then the biggest influence was probably Makeup Alley. This is just a really good salicylic acid product. So if you have large pores, blackheads, oily skin, acne, this is probably going to help your skin. I have tried so many products on the market and I still haven't found a salicylic acid product that works as well as this on my skin. This is probably a bit less budget friendly than your standard skincare addiction product. But if you look at it per mil, it's actually really good value because this bottle just does not run out. The Paula's Choice brand philosophy matches really well with skincare addiction. There's a lot of emphasis on science. Maybe some studies are taken a bit too seriously, but Paula was such a pioneer in educating consumers about skincare. And these products are just really, really good. Next, we have The Ordinary's Niacinamide, and this is, again, another really skincare addiction friendly brand. 
This is actually, I think, The Ordinary's top seller as well. The whole brand is really budget friendly and they really appeal to that sort of person who cares about ingredients. I think they were also really important in getting people to care about the science behind skincare products because they have these really technical names front and center. This product tends to be good for people who have acne, so again, it matches well with the skincare addiction demographic, but it does tend to break some people out and some people become scared of niacinamide because of this. I would definitely recommend trying more products with niacinamide and not dismissing all products with niacinamide on the basis of this because I did that and then I realized my skin actually loves niacinamide, it just doesn't love this product. It wasn't bad, it was just, you know, meh. So I think this one, I'm kind of hovering between solid choice and meh because I think it doesn't work for a big enough proportion of people. I'm gonna put it in meh for now. The next one is the CeraVe Salicylic Acid Cleanser. I think this is a good product for people whose skin maybe can't quite tolerate salicylic acid. Maybe they're using too many irritating ingredients already. If you're using these acne products, if you're using Differin or Tretinoin, or if you're also using benzoyl peroxide, then maybe your skin is a bit too irritated to go for something like the Paulus Choice 2% BHA. You can just get a little bit of salicylic acid and not dry out your skin too much. As a cleanser, I think it is too drying for everyday use. Even on my skin, which is more oily, it did feel quite dehydrating. It also does smell a bit, and on my skin, I didn't find that it did very much. And I think that's just because I use so much of the Paulus Choice 2% BHA. There's only so much that a salicylic acid cleanser can add. I'm gonna put this on the solid choice because I think it is a really useful product for a lot of people. Number nine is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel. When Neutrogena came out with the Hydro Boost range, it was really exciting because there just weren't many of these sort of Asian textured moisturizers on the market. What I mean by Asian textured is that it's got that sort of lightweight gel texture that's really hydrating without feeling heavy. And this is just amazing for oily skin. Now this product does have a little bit of a stronger fragrance than I prefer. American products in general tend to be a bit more heavily fragranced than Australian products. And as far as I know, it doesn't come in fragrance free. I'm gonna put this in solid choice, unless of course you have a fragrance problem. Next one is the COSRX Advanced Nail 96 Mucin Power Essence. I'm actually kind of surprised this is so high. At the same time, I'm not that surprised because Skincare Addiction's sister subreddit is Asian Beauty. There's a lot of crossover between users. This has been a classic for a really long time. I think it was launched maybe 2014, 2015, and it has been huge since then. I've actually been retrying this out properly for a video that is coming out, I think probably next week. My video schedule is super messed up at the moment, so that video is actually already live. So I'll save most of my comments for that, but this is a really good product. Lots of people love it. Some people do react to it, but again, not that many. So I'm gonna put this in Holy Grail. Our next product is La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm. This is going again straight to the Holy Grails. This is my go-to product for whenever my skin is really irritated. This is a really thick balm product that has lots of soothing ingredients in it. It's got B5, it's got one of the centella derivatives, Madecassicide. It's just really good for when your skin is irritated and can't really handle much else. When I have a lot of chafing around my nose, for example, I'll just slather this on and go to bed and the next day my skin will just be a lot happier. I don't think I've ever finished a tube of this. A little does go a long way. So I think it does end up being pretty good value, even though La Roche-Posay is probably maybe a little bit above CeraVe in terms of budget. Our next product is the Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser. Now this one is interesting because the cleanser that Cetaphil had before this new version was actually like a product that everyone kind of hated. The old version had a really short ingredients list, which is good if you have sensitive skin, you don't have to look through as many ingredients to try to work out if you can or can't use that product. But it just had a lot of ingredients that got demonized. So it had sodium laurel sulfate, which is a surfactant that tends to be a bit harsher. It had fatty alcohols, which some people think break them out. It had propylene glycol, which sounds a lot like like ethylene glycol, which is antifreeze, plus it had paraben. So you would get all these infographics where estheticians were just saying, Cetaphil is toxic sludge, which it isn't. Again, clean beauty is BS. It is just a misunderstanding of toxicology, but there were just a lot of easy reasons to pick on it. 
And it seemed kind of like they hadn't updated the formula for a few decades because it is a really old school formula. Lots of people do like it. And I think there was probably a big outcry when they did finally reformulate it to this current version. Now, this new version, I think, is a bit of a marketing dream at the moment because it just has a whole bunch of ingredients that everyone likes and nothing that's too easy to pick on. So they've taken out the SLS and the parabens and they have this really short ingredients list, which I think a lot of people like because it's a little bit less intimidating. It feels a bit less stranger danger. There are some trendy actives in this, panthenol and niacinamide, so vitamin B5 and B3, which I think are just really easy to market. There are some nice hydrating ingredients, so glycerin and pantolactone. And yeah, it's just a really inoffensive formula. Again, it is non-foaming, so it's very similar to that CeraVe hydrating cleanser. So I think this is probably trying to compete with that. I find it really inoffensive. It's fine. It's not like a joy to use, but it's really good. So I'm going to put it again in solid choice. All right, our next one is the Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acid. I think hyaluronic acid has been trending for such a long time. It's just pushed a lot in Western skincare. It's a humectant moisturizer that grabs onto water and keeps your skin hydrated by sort of trapping water, sticking to water and keeping it on your skin. I don't think most people need a separate hyaluronic acid product. I think the main complaint that people have about it that I agree with is that it's just a bit boring as a humectant. There are so many other ingredients that can do more, like glycerin is in so many things and it's a really good humectant already. There's the snail essence, which is just a heavy hitter. This is just a bit meh. So yeah, I don't hate it, but it's just gonna go in this area where I probably wouldn't recommend it, but if you're using it, I'm not gonna like knock it out of your hand. Then we have the Ordinary's Glycolic Acid Toner. This one I have mixed feelings on because this is a bit strong. So it says 7%, but it doesn't really feel like a 7% glycolic acid product. I think a lot of people end up overusing this and then burning their skin a lot. But I think it is really good for people who want a stronger chemical exfoliant and it is such good value. It is a huge bottle. I've actually been using this on other parts of my body. I've been using it under my arms as a deodorant. I know some people also use it on their scalp to like exfoliate their scalp. Up. So yeah, this is a good product. I'm going to say solid choice as long as you're using it properly and you're not, yeah, drowning your face in it. All right, number 15 is the CeraVe Healing Ointment. This is not officially available in Australia, but I do like it. So back in 2015, the idea of covering your face in Vaseline overnight became really popular on Reddit. There was some post about becoming a slug, which was kind of funny because people were into snail at the time as well. So yeah, that seems to be the origin of the term slugging, although people have been doing this for a much longer time. Tiara Willis, who is an esthetician, I think she's most active on Twitter. I think she came up with the term glazed donut, which is a bit nicer than slugging. And yeah, it's to do with using CeraVe healing ointment. As you'd expect, the main ingredient in this is petroleum jelly, which is thick and it's the gold standard occlusive ingredient. So it's really good at sealing in water into your skin. There's a bunch of other stuff mixed into this as well. So you've got CeraVe standard ceramides. There's also hyaluronic acid to hydrate and there's a bunch of other occlusives in this as well. I think they're added there so that this makes it a bit more spreadable than your standard petroleum jelly. I think I'm gonna shuffle some of my ratings. I'm gonna put the glycolic acid toner up to holy grail. I actually can't think of another chemical exfoliant that is this budget friendly. And I think that is rare enough that it can go into there. And then I'm gonna put the CeraVe healing ointment into solid choice because I personally am not a huge fan of slugging. On my skin, it's fine for other people's skin, but I just find it a bit messy on my pillowcase. And yeah, I've got other products that I prefer for that, which is, yeah, the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast. So there are my rankings of these 15. As you would expect, nothing is not for anyone because these are like the most popular 15 products on a really big website. I'll put the link to the full list in the description so you can check all of that out if you want. Yeah, let me know what you think of these products and my rankings. Was I really, really harshly unfair to like the ordinary is niacinamide. Let me know if you have any ideas for other ranking videos. If you want to nerd out more, I recently did a video where I talked about my whole approach to skincare and I will see you next time.